Hello! Welcome to How to Use Data Stores. In this video, you'll learn how you can use data stores to start working with large or messy data sets more efficiently. Let's say you're working with a large amount of data that could cause an error if you try to load it all into MATLAB at once. Or maybe your data is scattered across several files, so loading and pre-processing each file separately would make your code pretty messy. Alternatively, if you're preparing data for deep learning, it can take a lot of pre-processing code to get your data into a format that can be used for training. In all of these scenarios, using a data store would reduce the amount of code and memory needed to work with your data. So, what is a data store? A data store allows you to access and process a collection of data without the need to load it all into memory at once. It can point to a single file, multiple files, all files in a folder, or even multiple folders. Data stores are compatible with a wide variety of data types, such as spreadsheets, images, audio signals, and more. For today's example, I'll be working with image data, but the general concepts I show will apply to all kinds of data stores. With that in mind, let's get started. Let's say I have two folders of images that I want to analyze in these two locations. We can create a data store for this data using the image data store function and I'll call it DS. We give it the location of each folder and specify any additional requirements. In this case, I only want JPEG, TIFF, or PNG images, so I'll specify these file extensions as a name value pair. When run, this creates a data store object that can be used to access our data. We can view the first image in our data store using the preview function without changing our location in the data store. If we try to preview or read from this data store again, it will still show this first image. Once you have created a data store, it's time to start using the data. In this for loop, we first use the files property to access the names of each file in the data store, and then use the length function to count how many files there are. We then read each image in order using the read image function, which allows you to specify which number image you want to read. Since data stores return data in order by default, you could also just use the read function here, but I wanted to show both options. Then it goes through all our color images, calculates the average hue, saturation, and value for each, and finds the images with the highest average hue, saturation, and value, respectively. We can then display these stored images to see the results. This is a good example of how data stores enable you to use all of the data and extract desired information without running out of memory. Now that we are pros at creating and reading from data stores, let's talk about a few common functions you can use when working with them. Data stores remember what you have and have not yet seen, so that each time you call the read function, it will return the next piece of new data. Since I want to start from the beginning for the next few examples, I will use the reset function to set the data store to point to the top of our data. Now, there may be times when you only need to access a small portion of your data for processing, testing, or exploration, but you may not always want this to be the first section returned by the read function. If you want to break your data set into even batches, you can use the partition function. This divides the data store into multiple parts of equal size, or as close to as equal as is possible, then creates a new data store that points to one of those parts. For example, I want to partition our data into three parts and return a data store that points to the second part, which I'll call part DS. The original data store, DS, is unchanged, and we have a new data store containing the section of data I want. I'll use the read all function to import all of the data in this partition and then visualize all of the images side by side. This allows us to see the partition we've extracted so we can process and test our data from there. To access specific parts of the data set, even if they're not adjacent to each other, we can use the subset function instead. This allows us to specify what data we want to extract. Let's say instead of an even partition of images next to each other, I want to look at a random sampling of our data. We have eight images total, so I'll pick a few scattered indices that indicate which images I want to look at and read and visualize them as I did before. Voila! Now you can process just this subset of data. When working with or analyzing data, you may want to manipulate or standardize the data before using it. 
For example, these images appear to be different sizes, but for my analysis, I want each image to be the same exact size. It would take a lot of computational time and resources to load every image, change its size, and save the new image back to the computer, so data stores provide a way to transform data on the fly. We can use the transform function to apply a transformation to each element of the data store as it is loaded into the workspace. In this code, we use the transform function on the data store to apply this anonymous function, which resizes each image to be the same size, 256 by 340 pixels. Now, if we look at the first two images of the untransformed data store, we can see that these two images are, in fact, different sizes. When we do the same thing for the transformed data store, they are the same. And that's it. With these few functions, you're ready to start using data stores to work with your data sets. To learn more about customizing your data stores and working with other types of data, check out our documentation linked in the description. Thank you for watching.